Welcome to Show Studio. Um, it's Menswear Roundup Day, um, and it's our last broadcast of the day, and we're going to be talking about Paris. So it is kind of the big one, both in terms of sort of the acclaim that surrounds uh, Paris menswear, but also given the quantity of shows there, it's really, really incredible. But actually, I've got an incredible panel with me today, but I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Steve. I'm Steve Sorter, and I'm Fashion News Editor at ID. I'm Elizabeth Fraserville, and I'm Fashion Editor at Dazed and Confused. I'm Jack Borquette, and I'm Fashion Editor of ID. And I'm Mandy Landers, and I run a fashion consultancy called Mandy's Basement. So we've got an ID-heavy panel here today. Yeah, we're really speaking. taking control. <laughs> Not quite. <Amazing. laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth's like in the middle, fighting. <laughs> I split um, them up on purpose. <laughs> yeah, you did. Stop them ganging up. Um, I want to start by going in um, with one particular show, um, which was the uh, Raph Simpsons Sterling Ruby show, because obviously that was just such a kind of incredible moment. And I think it's, it's really apt to start by talking about that, because it's not only was it a beautiful collection, it also sort of kind of redefined how menswear should be shown and presented and I'm interested to get everyone's take. Mandy, what did you what did you think That's about really it? funny because he's branded the show as um, uh, Ruby Ster Sterling Ruby. Sterling Ruby. And um, when you see it listed on a lot of the um, uh, sites that feature the shows, they're not calling it that. So it's even though he's it branding it as that, it's still like this square peg in a round hole. Yeah. But yes, I think there's a very big influence with a lot of designers now with art mm -hmm. collaborating, and they don't, they're not gratuitous. I mean, very, this is like a nine year relationship. Yeah, completely. It's, it's quite intense. Um, and it, it's just been incredible. Everyone I know is talking about it. I mean, as well, a lot of girls want to order pieces oh, from it. Yeah. And, and I must admit, I'm resisting a little bit. The fashion victim side of me desperately wants a certain coat from it. But the other side of me is, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, mm. every single person I know is going to be wearing this coat next yeah, season. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so. Well, it's strange because it feels kind of outside of fashion, as you say, because there's such an authenticity to the partnership because they've been friends for sort of almost a decade. But in terms of fashion and this kind of the pace of fashion, the fact that everyone wants something new, everyone wants, everyone wants something exclusive, everyone wants something that's you know hard to get your hands on, it really fits into the kind of the fashion wheel, which I guess maybe Raph didn't intend, but... But I think when a lot of the editors have gone to the showrooms, you guys have probably been too, um, they did comment that some of the pieces were one-offs or one of three. Yeah. So it's not all being produced. No. And a lot of it was hand-painted as well, and very, very kind of, yeah, one-off, as you say. What was, what was the rest of your take on it? Jack, what did you think? I liked it. I liked it a lot, but I wouldn't say that I necessarily wanted to wear it. But then I suppose that's maybe a good thing. Mm. Um, because I kind of see it in more in a shooting kind of way. I think it's kind of interesting that they did it together as like a friendship, but then I kind of agree with Mandy that no matter how much he wants to kind of support that relationship, it's still falling back into him mm. and it all being about him, which is kind of the whole point is mm. the opposite of that. But um, I think it's great. I think the colors are great. I kind of, I've, I heard something about that it was based on ceramics, or they like ceramics, and that's kind of, mm. I don't know. I think he basically designed what he liked, his statement pieces, and then kind of sent it away. Yeah. And then it was kind of added on to. But it felt very merged, I thought, when yeah. you were there. It didn't feel kind of two separate ideas. I don't know, what was your take on it, Elizabeth? Um, at first, I really didn't like it. Um, but the more I read up on it and the more I look at it, the more I like it. And now I kind of love it. <laughs> so it's kind of full circle for me. It's just like, I guess once you read up on, I knew a little bit about uh, Sterling Ruby, but not, not that much before the collection happened. Um, and yeah, when, when you read about like the kind of ideas behind it, and I think it was Raf's dad that was in the army and Sterling Ruby was brought up on like an army base, was it? Mm. Something about that. Yeah, there's a lot of synergy between that. Upbringing. Yeah, there's a lot of synergy and it's really nice. And the kind of, the friendship and the way that they've worked together on it is something that you don't really see that often. You see artists working with designers, but not quite in the same way. It's quite different to anything I've seen before. Yeah, I think that's such an astute point that, and Mandy, you said as well, that, like art's having a real moment in fashion. You do see artists working a lot with designers, but it tends to be, you know, they'll make a print for something or they'll do something that's very kind of used just by that fashion designer in a fashion context. So to see something that's kind of a real merge is quite exciting. From, yeah. from like a fashion news perspective, do you, did you think this was very new? It was new. I mean, they were, and they were quite keen to, to go back to that point of like pressing every time, any, every backstage interview, Raph was like, it's not my collection, it's, it's our collection, it's, yeah. it's definitely us. We're thinking about our man, it wasn't my man. Even though, but for me, when I first looked at it, it, it felt like I was looking at 
and has the same energy to rap. old school rap. Yeah, and I think for the last few seasons, last for two seasons specifically, it felt it's felt like he's found his kind of menswear mojo again, which. Yeah. You know, being a f- huge fan and growing up on on Raph Simmons, when his menswear was at the fore, um, you know, it's, it's it's only a good thing. But mm. I think he, yeah, he's managed to balance that between keeping his own sense of self and almost kind of exploring similar ideas to like the right, right, right collection. Um, that's like kind of what I, I got from it. Mm. But um, but but balancing um, Zelly Ruby's ideas as well. Mm. Will this change the way fashion is presented? Do we think will we see more stuff like this, or is this because Raph's always ahead of the game? But there yeah. might be more attempts, but I don't think that it would be difficult to, to match it up and, and, and for, it, for it to feel as honest as this. Mm. There might be more collaborations between artists and designers, but yeah, I don't think anybody should really try and attempt to... It's very difficult for a designer that's been designing for so long to then go and create the energy that they had like, in some of their first collections. Yeah. Like, only really mm. people like Marc Jacobs and like, Prada can do that. Mm. Um, but I think the art thing is that the whole zeitgeist thing, that fashion people want to be part of something and it's like fashion people are already part of fashion. Mm. So they want to be part of something else and that's kind of what the art world is. I think it's what Karl Lagerfeld did with the last women's. It was like, you know, the next kind of thing that yeah. we want to be part of. Well, fashion people, they always see art as kind of yeah. aspirational still because it's, there's that kind of, it's like a higher yeah. art in a way. It's that strange chip on your so- shoulder thing yeah. that fashion pack have, I think. They, you mentioned the um, RAF early collection, mm. Steve, and um, everyone's so obsessive about those collections. Yeah. I mean, you know, I still hanker after those original pieces. I know that the guy at LNCC had an amazing archive that he sold okay. off, and mm. you could just looking at them and the influence that they had. And then you always say that when something's art connected, it's kind of more collectible. Yeah. Mm. Well, fashion is collectible, but yeah, this collection is pretty out there. Yeah. And, and, and also, I'm always interested in the branding element, so um, I think it's really, really brave or, or heartfelt, whichever you, you, you want it to be, that he's actually saying, oh no, it's not me, it's us. Yeah. So it's almost like, okay, is this a new brand? What are we going to do next season? Meanwhile, Saint Laurent are desperately trying to rebrand mm. as Saint Laurent. Um, but you, but their Twitter is still YSL. Yeah, exactly. You go in the stores and it's still Yves Saint Laurent. So. <laughs> Yeah. There's a jarring of, of what, a fo- what a focus of a brand is, mm-hmm. but actually I think by him doing this um, as a duo, as a collection, and, and doing it under that brother and insisting that's the label, I think that that makes it more bespoke to the customer, more mm-hmm. desirable and more, and it's a more exclusive, the, the which is what, what everybody wants, one of one. Yeah. They want a, a special one-off. Yeah, and especially the RAF shoppers, I think it's so astute that you said that, that they are a kind of bit of an addictive shopper, you know, there's, there's a cult around him. Yeah. People love to have something from every collection. You know, there's the pieces people go to, those, those sales and try and get sort of key pieces. And and it is a testimony to his strength as a designer. I mean, the names you threw out there, Jack Green said Mark Jacobs or Prada could do something like this. You know, Rafa, he's not an old designer. He's, a, he's mm. And to got himself to a position where he can, you know, rebrand for a season with such effortlessness, I think that's really impressive. Yeah, yeah and be allowed to do that. Yeah, you know, not many people have the free reign, reign to be like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it with this person, you know, it's mm. so controlled, it's kind of, it's mm. more interesting, isn't it? I think the point, thing, sorry, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think the point is that he, he feels like an old designer, yeah. everyone knows his stuff, he's got such a cult following, he might as well be a Prada, mm. or what was the other one you Mark said, Jacobs. Mark Jacobs, mm. he might as well be, because, mm. you know, you go back to like, uh, Raph Simmons Redux and you look at all of that kind of stuff and it's just it's inspired an entire form of fashion yeah completely um so yeah he's more than justified to push the boat out on this one i no, think definitely mandy you mentioned san laurent and i think we should go to that next because it's kind of in branding and in an aesthetic it's kind of completely completely different and um, what was our take on on san laurent this season what's that, actually no that's maybe a bad question what's our take on san laurent in general Elizabeth, where do you stand? <laughs> <laughs> You're like smiling at me, like, please don't ask me. No, I really love it. Do you? I really, I've fallen for it. Um, particularly the menswear. Um, I don't know, it's just a guy that you want to see walking down the street. It's somebody that, like, boys can aspire to be. And it's just interesting. Like, I'm kind of bored of the whole, like, skinny debate. Like, they're just boys. Like most of these, most of the boys you see on the catwalk are just boys, and they're in bands. And this is like, 
this is what Hedy's creating. It's his vision, and it's these boys that are wearing these clothes. And I just think it's great. He's, He's formed like that. a little gang. <laughs> yeah. 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 The boys have always been skinny. Even at yeah. Dior, they were so skinny. It's mm. just his silhouette is that. You know, Egon Sheila didn't start doing fat women. Mm. They were always that frame. Why does it rile people so much then, the skinniness? Do you think people, is it good that people are more aware of it now? Mm. Steve? <laughs> it's difficult whenever we, I mean, I sometimes, I mean, I look after ID's Instagram and, and social channels and if, when if, if, there's, a, if there's like a, a model that's, that looks like she could be a bit underweight that I know as soon as I press publish that it's gonna it's gonna be picked up upon. Yeah. Um, but people don't pick up on it for boys usually, but they start. No, they, they do. They do. It's they better do than both, particularly for for Saleron, Saleron models. Yeah. Whenever we did it on Facebook, they they're all over it. Um, I, th I think it's a shame. It's just. Well, it's interesting what Elizabeth said because it's hard to. I think he's put himself in an interesting position where it's hard to criticise because there's such a a realness to it because these aren't models it's not fashion yeah. you know when people criticize and say oh fashion showing skinny boys this isn't fashion and it's kids in bands as, as elizabeth said you know they're all kind of well, street cast for want of a, a better word because they're just so it's, it's like who else decide. can make an emerald green sequin jacket who can make that something that boys actually want to wear mm. heady <laughs> <laughs> you love him what's your take on it mandy um well when you see it in the stores, I mean, it really is skinny as anything. Yeah. And it reminds me, I remember once um, uh, Victoria Beckham's office, when she was starting out, sent me a dress. It w um, Love, Love did a collaboration and she'd made a special dress, um, I think for a Dover Street market pop-up shop. And I remember just standing in the middle of my office with this dress thinking, oh my God, it fits my thigh. <laughs> 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 and. Um, and when you actually see the clothes at retail, it, he's really alienating a whole yeah. demographic of customer who's, who's got the budget. I mean, the, these are real clothes. These are clothes that we want to wear. We can completely relate to them. But they're really expensive and they're beautiful quality. Mm. But actually, the sort of people who've got that money, you're kind of slicing off a whole, a whole um, percentage of potential customers mm -hmm. by, by doing that. I mean, the menswear this season, I mean, in a way, the... Um, Jackets and coats were a lot looser. In fact, the coats yeah, were beautiful the for men. They really were really the best. Yeah. The best. Um, I think everyone was going crazy about those. And the Lurex jackets and the skinny. I mean, the silhouette was a little looser. Mm. Um, but but I, I'm my gut is getting a little bit bored of this band thing. And you know, it's it's one thing. You know, we're seeing this in Paris, and it is the label that we all. If we want to buy stuff for ourselves, it is the label. I want the handbag. I want the you know. I love the women's, blah, blah, blah. There is an odd piece of men's, but you know, this is what One Direction are wearing. Justin Bieber's losing it right now and he's wearing Givenchy. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's like, it, the reality check, it, you know, I, I'm getting a little bit tired of the whole band thing. If yeah, I'm that's interesting, whether people still see that as an aspirational in any way. I don't know, what do you guys think? It's, it's kind of music and that whole scene, is it something that kids, the kids, I always say that, that's not like a grandma, but there's something that people still <laughs> have, the kids still have still kids. I think when he was designing at Dior Homme, those were the kind of, the, the bands that he was kind of using um, and was wearing his clothes were kind of quite big, quite well known, yeah. whereas now they're quite, it's quite a niche really subculture niche, now. Yeah. Um, in a way that makes me like it more, in, a way, in, in, in some capacity. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's aspirational. I don't think many men would look at these guys and go, I would love to look like that. But I felt a bit like this season, like I really loved this season actually, and I felt like he was trying to combat a lot of that criticism you know, about mm. it not being luxurious. You know, there's been so many kind of comments about, I think particularly the women's wear, which I can really understand of how it just doesn't look expensive. Yeah. But I think with this, especially you know, being at the show and seeing those, the coats in, in, in the context of those amazing lights and that set, the, the fit was also, as Mandy says, it was a bit looser, so it felt really a bit more exciting, but just the way they shimmered and sparkled, and some of them in a really subtle way, some of them in a really obvious way, it was incredibly, it felt like he was saying, look what I make, look what I can do. Because when you, as Manny says, when you see the pieces in the shops, they're actually beautiful. Yeah. But it's hard to see that on the runway, but I felt like this season you could see that on the I runway. See, I felt the more. women's is beautiful. I've always found the women's be beautiful the last couple of seasons. Yeah. Um, but actually, I think he, he had an obscure new band. Um, they were like at school in 2008. Yeah. Um, and and they, they were quite unknown. And um, it's quite amazing that he got them to do the soundtrack. Mm. Yeah, I think there's something, it's kind of, 
he makes people, doesn't he? There's something quite great. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like what Tim Blank said in his Style.com report. Like, what kid, I'm going to make you huge. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. That's true. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Like, he walks into a bar, he sees a band, he's going to make them big, and he does, and it's great. And all you have to do is look on the front row and see see who's buying it. Mm. Like, it's all the mm. kids. But that's, as Manny said, that is, is that a small demographic? You know, there's not well, a lot of I, kids that... I must admit, th- o- over the years when you've gone to shows, the, you know, the idea that these cool kids were at the Saint Laurent show and they're all crouching on the floor, I mean, that's great. Yeah. Because I think that um, the designers, when you have that vibe at a show, it is, you've got the followers there. And it's really important, you know, it's not just about the press. You know, it's about those real die-hard followers. Yeah. And it's getting increasingly hard for them to get in the shows, I must say, in mm. Paris particularly. Yeah. The security in Paris, you know, if I go to the odd show in Paris where I haven't bothered getting a ticket or whatever, I do know the security, there's a certain security card group that I know, yeah. and, and it's not a problem. And also, you always know someone who works for the, inter, is interning with them and you get in the backstage. Yeah. <laughs> Could you tell me they were in like, the mafia, you're like, oh, the security guards. <laughs> but, but seriously though, it is really hard. I, yeah. I think in London, I've noticed that people can still get in shows. You know, just before the end, they'll let in, you know, if they've got room, they'll let people in. But in Paris, I really feel sorry for people because you need that to make an atmosphere in a show you need that die-hard yeah, supporter. Yeah, and it's, it is one of the only shows in like a good comparison that obviously it's we, where you have a Westwood you know it's kind of you go there and you're like who are these people oh. but in Paris San Juan is one of the only ones where it feels like that kind of that real cult. I think that's great that you had that yeah. I mean I like that you know. I think it feels like personal that. I think it is personal to him I think that's what comes across mm. you know it's what he likes it's the clothes he likes it's the models that he likes it's the music that he wants um it's like that everything is branded to what he likes, you know, even down to the book that was the invitation, you know. Mm. It kind of feels kind of poignant to him and what he wants and yeah, his it's taste. It's kind of narcissistic and in the most lovely way. Yeah. Yeah, but it's strange because people, you, when, I think it's interesting you say like narcissistic, but you say in a lovely way because people admire that kind of focus and that, and that being, something being very authentic and being very personal in a lot of other designers. Like on our London panel this morning, we were talking about the Aggie and Sam collection, how personal that felt, and people think of it as a really great thing. But it's strange with Eddie, I don't know if it was because of the rebranding, but that kind of, how personal he makes it and how true to himself he makes it, people have kind of, that seems to have riled people, which is quite odd, because usually that's something that people sort of praise. I feel maybe the first season it was like that, but I feel like now everyone's kind of got on board. Everyone yeah. that I speak to, old, young, likes it. they all want it. They all want that sheepskin coat, or they all want that you know, leather jacket or he's just making clothes that are really well made that people want, you know, a good biker jacket, a good shearling jacket, a good ripped jean, a good leather trouser. I want, I want the men's vampire ring, have you seen yeah. it? Yeah, yeah it's neat. Good. fantastic. <laughs> good jewellery, good shoes, it's kind of the in that era. It's like, yeah, it's nothing like creating something new, mm. but it doesn't always work, mm. people doing that. Why, you know, fashion is fashion, that's what Saint Laurent did originally yeah. in Saint Laurent. What else was a highlight from Paris? I'll throw it open for you guys to steer us. Any any highlights? I've got one. Yeah? Uh, com. Com. Let's go. Can we go to Com now? What? Why Just did the you the hair. Love? I love the hair. Yeah. yeah. It was com so over good. my face. <laughs> 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 Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Sorry. It was amazing. It was quite daunting to be there, which I think is really apt because when you're at a com show, I, I wrote about this in my review, but it feels you're always a little bit on edge at a competition because you're so aware of how you know, intellectual and how amazing Ray Kawakubo and Com is. So to do something that felt quite aggressive and quite intimidating is really apt, I thought. Yeah. Really great. I like the way she brought it back to her first collection with the holes and everything, but mainly it's like, that hair's just incredible. Like yeah. We did an interview with uh, Julian Deese, the hairstylist for it, and he was saying it's like a, a mixture of um, what was it, Ganesh and the Elephant Man? <laughs> and so got, like these trunk formations coming down, made completely out of these wigs that he creates himself in his atelier. Yeah. And it's just, um, it's kind of amazing what they come up with. The way that he has free reign and the way that he works with Ray and Adrian. It's just he's um, genius. Yeah, and he's been working. I think he must have done every show for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Com and Yoji and proper sculptor but nice. they look like bugs to me when they came out and they walked so yeah. slowly they look like mosquitoes in yeah. suits like they look like a mask when you first look at yeah. it yeah, yeah. The gas it's almost mask. like a gas mask. i thought they were chris, yeah. chris sutton masks yeah yeah they yeah oh my god they do actually mm. no they looked much more hair like in the flesh didn't they because they were kind they're of parted glossy from the back and glossy and, and they looked like they were wet twisted and they're all different and they move really slowly and it's good what's it called holy jacket or something the collection holy something yeah yeah 
I think it was interesting though to see, we were talking about this on the London one as well to see just tailoring and see it in a really great way and I think maybe that's why it felt so exciting the show as well because you know, there was such a we're not really seeing tailoring elsewhere in the shows that you think it was exciting and to see it here done in such a kind of authentic calm way but in a way that felt really exciting was really great mm. did you like it a lot Jack as well was it a highlight for you I really loved it I I loved it as a show and I love calm and I love the hair and I love Julianne's work um, yeah it wasn't my favourite but I did love it um, it reminded me of like some weird Stephen Klein shoot with Panos you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any favourites what did you like I'm trying to think of what we talked about when we were in Paris yeah I'm not saying this because of Anders but Dries <laughs> show was amazing yeah, just the whole thing of it yeah. and I wasn't like hugely like I've never worn Dries before or have never really taken much interest in it but the show was just amazing the music the, the way that it was done, the boys all coming out in the groups Was that the neon, neon partings in the hair? Yeah, 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 they had like the little strips little of strips, different yeah. colours. And the music was like, give me shelter, Rolling, yeah, Stones, Rolling Stones, but it was just amazing. the vocal, so it was like church, yeah, you know, it was yeah. like a prayer, it was amazing. And the finale was so Yeah, good. and so they all came out in like, they all crossed over, so it was like the, all the lime greens, all the dark the greens, all the pinks. The colour, yeah. yeah, in like a tribe, it was really great. It didn't feel like a Dries collection at first, yeah. which was nice, it was refreshing yeah. that he still got that, you know, ability to, to mix things up a little bit. Well, yeah. I didn't like it when it first came out, because obviously because it was colour blocked, in you know, very literal, yeah. it was like blocks of colours, and it came out, and I was like, oh my god, why is it all pink? It was <laughs> awful. And then it started <laughs> to change, and then you kind of started to understand, and it was... What was your favourite period, your colour period? I like the, his blue period, yeah, it's very so. Picasso, yeah. I really like yeah. the blue period. No, I thought it was great, it actually leads to a question I really wanted to ask all of you, which is this idea of kind of the show, um, because that's something that I think, you know, Dries has always done, particularly this season, it, it was like a production, it felt like a real show, everyone left kind of you couldn't really help but be sort of a bit more inspired by it because you know like the Rolling Stones, that incredible venue, the way they came out at the end. Is it quite nice to see something that is just like a really big show, especially when you've got calm, you know, like no music, completely kind of silent. Do we like a bit of theatre? Yeah, I think we're missing it. I think it's nice to have someone that's got a little bit more showmanship. Mm. that kind of considers that. Everything is so important when you're looking at something. Mm. You know, even like a music video or something like that, it's amazing because it's the image and the movement and the casting and the, the song and it's all about making someone feel something. So, mm. yeah, I think it's really important. Mm. I, think, I think it goes back to the whole, we, we always keep talking about this, but the sensory experience of going to a show. Mm. Yeah. I mean, even at a Comedy Garçon show, if there's no soundtrack, one season I had no music and it was a bit... <laughs> yeah. um, it's a sensory experience and I know that um, one designer that I really like and I think he's coming up in the fast lane is Julian David, mm -hmm. um, someone who Sarah Collette's really been championing and now he's just doing so well and um, his show was really interesting because mm -hmm. um, he was kind of controlling every element. I mean, the casting was the first thing that hit me, really awesome casting and he yeah. did it himself, I later found out. Um, but he actually had um, a, a kind of screaming rap a cappella on his runway, Death Grips, a kind of West Coast, yeah. West Coast hip hop group. And then he had a fi an art film made for it. I can't remember the name of the, the, of the artist, but um, there was like a really lovely red glow with this film going on while the show was being presented. And I thought that was all, that was quite exciting. Really well and, and it was the same day as Raf, so he could have been really overshadowed by Raf, but yeah, he but wasn't. wasn't. People yeah. really respected what really he put out. That's interesting. I think for me it has to have the theatre, otherwise now in today's modern world that there is no need necessary to have a show. If you're just going to do yeah. a bog standard show, then why don't you just shoot a lookbook and just send it out? Why, does, why do people have to go there? Yeah. I think you have to make a reason for yeah. people to be there yeah. and for it to be a sensory experience. Like the, a bit you have to make a show out of yeah. it. Yeah. Even yeah. when you're putting together a show, you're the designer or the stylist, you think of it from the perspective of, yes, you've got all the pieces that the buyers have bought that you already know that are going to go in the campaign and you already know what's... But you're making a show and you're making it more than what it should be because it's a show. Yeah. Um, and I feel like with Dries, I don't know if you guys would agree, it didn't feel like it was a show for the sake of it being a show. It felt like it helped you understand what he was thinking about that season. It helped you, you get his perspective. Mm. What, what were your thoughts on it, Elizabeth? Did you like it? Um, uh, by this stage, I was getting a little bit... Uh, I wouldn't say bored of the shows, but... <laughs> you were flagging. <laughs> I was <Exhausted>. flagging, <laughs> as Jay did. Um, just because everyone seems to be... This season, it seems to be a lot about uh, kind of palate cleansers. Yeah. And whilst I think this was kind of a palate cleanser in the sense that it's nothing like anything he's done before, 
it was so much more exciting. Like at yeah. least it had that bit, that finale and that like color blocking and that mm. kind of, you know, you could understand straight away where it was going and what he was trying to do. Yeah. Um, I think that's really, you really said you could understand what he was doing for me. I thought this was it was a very modern collection that way. You know, yeah. it was simple. It was like you know, Rolling Stones, blocks of color, and and to me, I, I, th I think I was one of the only people that saw this. But I felt like it was a comment on you know the way fashion is bought and sold. Because you know, black doesn't sell, color sells online. It was all color, and I thought it felt very current, it yeah. felt very modern and forward thinking. Yeah. And, and, and he kept with everything. Everything was so urban and like utility, and you think Dries, and it's like dandy kind of. But he kind of did it great, you know, yeah. putting that like urban you, you you know kind of dandy together yeah but it looking new and looking like not you know still looking quite like masculine and it felt a bit like rave almost some yeah. bits yeah. but still kept his like soft tailor yeah and like first stole like what yeah. kind of man is going to wear like a bomber and a first stole but it kind of works you know and i think that urban dandy thing you know that the ruffled shirts but then with the bomber it was kind yeah. of a real mismatch i think there was a lot of jarring yeah. going on on the runways i mean That's so true. tom brown yeah. had that it was like yeah. the hunter and the hunted with the big animal heads but then you had this very wearable group <coughs> um who were the hunters and um Rick Owens as well, which is like um, the kind of um, the kind of the nun, submissive nun vibe going on, and then you've got the warrior with the really really hard um, warrior sleeveless tabard yeah. jackets. So I think that jarring, again, when you're seeing a, a collection being presented, the jarring helps it be visible. If it's kind of easy to digest, palate cleanser, whatever, mm. you can just fall asleep. You've been to see so many shows in one yeah. day, you just don't digest it. But if it kind of wakes you up, it's like, oh, what's going on here? Or, or there's like this screechy rap, or someone's fingers are going down the blackboard. You know, it kind of pushes you, pushes you, you back yeah. to your senses. No, that's true. Did you guys feel that at Tom Brown a little bit pushed, <laughs> a little bit rude awakening? <laughs> I think it's always the case with, with Tom's. I think he, he likes to make people uncomfortable. Um, I think that's that's his, that's, his, that's his whole deal. I um, liked it. But, uh, you yeah. liked it. Yeah, it made me like. I still thought about it afterwards. I like remember it. You know, there's some shows that I'm like, oh god, what did that look like again? Yeah, that's true. You know, at least it. That really know. comes through in these panels. It's interesting actually when you ask people the highlights of the season and they say stuff and then towards the end you'll talk about different collections like oh I've forgotten about that but I loved it and we kind of loved it that much yeah. loved it, I think what was exciting this year was that it's the first time that he worked with Stephen Jones and he was really really excited about that yeah. and actually that first group of the show he was quite restrained I mean we're used to that big boxy silhouette which I found very difficult to digest for a couple of seasons and yeah. I always thought he was almost like a kind of London designer stuck in New York but if he was in London we wouldn't want to know yeah. and actually I've got a lot of time and respect for him now his business is doing incredibly well yeah. incredibly well. Um, Dover Street Market New York has opened and I believe he's in there yeah. um, and and what was good about this show was that there was this intro, this kind of ha first half which was wearable you could understand the wearable yeah. pieces whereas before he's just put on this facade of the yeah, kind of look and feel. Yeah. He ended up becoming a sort of a caricature oh, completely, you know yeah. the last the yeah. last collection specifically spring summer 14 when it was kind of like this weird sort of Nazi. Yeah that was yeah, it was it was very odd. With the J.W. Anderson shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was odd, wasn't it? Talking of kind of theatre and, and, and sort of this um, and the sense of comedy, I do want to talk a bit about Rick Owens because you mentioned him, Mandy, and, and it was an interesting season because backstage he was saying, you know, Rick Owens was very pared back this season in, in terms of the production. You know, we, we, after he couldn't that, go any further though from well, from, yeah. exactly. from his women's wear show and his men's wear show. But with, he with could Gaston have. And, he could have done. He do you could. Think he could? I'm just, I'm see? not interested, like, this, is, I mean, it's a nice collection, it's really nice, he did a good job, but there's always room to do more mm. show-stopping. But I think the last one too, must have taken it out of him. Yeah. The women's, so he said I mean, it was like six one. months, yeah, like, to, to plan it, even if not more than six months. Yeah. He said um, he felt trapped by being this kind of, like, But it's so great master. that you want to see more of it. Yeah, you don't want to go back to normal. Yeah. I'm sure this is just a, you know, just having I think, a I think rest. you can um, kind of, if you start doing that every season, people start to expect things. It puts yeah. pressure on you, and also it becomes gratuitous. Whereas actually, you know, you were saying about you wanted a show to be theatre. Mm. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think it does need to be. I mean, Gareth Pugh's done loads of shows over the seasons at the theatre, and then his most recent two shows have been very, very much up, up yeah, down, but the true. clothes speak for themselves. Yeah, and I think 
I think as long as you can see them and appreciate them. But I think he, there's a definite aesthetic here yeah. Um, yeah. that came across. It didn't need to be any more than it was. And I think the juxtaposition of the kind of hard um, kind of clo armour clothing, warrior, yeah. it was like warriors go was, going down the runway, was kind of kind of quite startling with these kind of nun type headpieces. Yeah, like do rag. I found that a great kind of image. Yeah. Do rag nuns. Mm. Yeah. Well, the shoes were wicked. Yeah. They're like wellies kind of boots, yeah, like baggy boots. I thought it was great. Well, did you like it a lot? Were you sad? To, were you like Elizabeth a bit kind of like, oh, no, I, really I liked, liked it. it. I did like it. I thought it was a great more. collection. I just want more. <laughs> you just want more. You yeah. like it too much. Just greedy. Yeah. More greedy. Rick. No, I understand that. But do you think, do you think it's, it's good that he has that confidence to say, I'm going to take a step back, you know, I'm not just going to be kind of giving this kind of reality sort of I think you need to have kind of like, what's the word, restraint, because having calm moments and then loud moments, that's what makes the loud moments really stand out. I think if he'd followed it immediately with that, firstly he would have felt like he couldn't have followed that, and anything would have been compared to that and it wouldn't have been as good as, as and he, you know, it doesn't, he doesn't, the designers, they don't have enough time to be able to like spend six months casting, you know, like, stepping dancers. Yeah. He's a very yeah. laid back guy as well. I mean, he, he's, he's not bothered by that. He's not thinking, oh, what we're going to do next season. Yeah. It's yeah. just not about that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think this collection is a reaction to like Style.com saying, oh, we couldn't, yeah, because the last the <laughs> women's wear collection looked a bit jarring on the site. I don't think it's any reaction to that. It's just literally yeah. him just going, no, I would like to do something different. Yeah, he's, he literally he's said that. He was like, yeah. I just want to do, he was like, I was tired of the expectations. I want to do something else. He said that kind of backstage to everyone who's like, why was there no theatre? Which I thought was great, you know, he's like not answering Didn't to this need kind it. of the pace yeah. of I, I don't, I, I kind of think that doesn't say much about the audience if that's what people were saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd expect the audience to kind of respect him a bit more than that. Mm. But I think it's not, it's not out of just a want to be kind of entertained. I think it's more that, I think, especially with the women's wear with that step dance, I think people felt like it was really a move forward for fashion. It really changed things and it felt, I think that's kind of the, I don't know, you were saying you, you missed that. Was it that Yeah, it's certainly not it? about, I mean, I love to be entertained, but it's, <laughs> not, about, it's not about that. It's um, he was bringing something so different that nobody else has done. Like, who gets together those step dances and like Winnie the Purr? <laughs> Winnie Purr. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the heavy metal green. Yeah, yeah. Estonian yeah. Eurovision yeah. Song Contest. Yeah. Exactly, like they're from the Eurovision Song Contest. Like, yeah. They're not even cool. <laughs> they're yeah. just, like, just yeah. losers. It but it's amazing. Win, yeah. yeah, and you do need that. And it's so you? much fun, and he just goes for it, and I enjoy it when he does go for it. And it, I think also one thing is it gives his clothes a different kind of life, but it was nice to see them in a, in a different form this season. They felt more kind of pure and, and, and there's that regal element to them that you haven't noticed in so that was I guess interesting to see the change and um, this takes us on to talking about someone who I think was had a really good season which was Chris Van Ash both at his own his own collection but also at Dior Homme should we if we go to Dior Homme first just to make life easy for Liam because it's really <laughs> bad for you um, what did what did we think of what Chris Van Ash put out I love Dior Homme did you yeah, tell I me about Dior. why did you love Dior Homme I thought it was great yeah like it was just everything about it I just loved I mean the seating's really nice you know the seating's always really nice but then like you get to the like Japanese nylon parkas and the mustard yellow jackets and the kind of everything about it was just great like the styling the hair of the boys the music was Wasn't it Michelle it? Gobert yeah I think so because it kept chopping and changing didn't it or I think it was imagine? all yeah Michelle's good um it was just fantastic like I really I really found something in it that I wanted to shoot and I wanted to see people wearing. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And there were these lovely references, which I think just for the sake of our viewers, it's nice to talk about to kind of the, the codes of Dior and Christian Dior, you know, with the lily of the ballet, and which was kind of put in, in these kind of trompe l'oeil details on, on, um, on suits. So it kind of looked like it was in their pocket and we all had it on our seats. And that was a flower that Christian Dior believed was lucky. So there were, and there were also some of those kind of swelling graffiti prints that I, took, I thought it looked kind of like a rose, which again oh, is very... Oh, I didn't dual. like those at all. Did you not like that? Oh, I just thought it looked so random. I really did, and I thought, if you're going to buy it, do you really want that on it? Do you want the sprig coming out your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like any of that. Mm -hmm. but do you, I, I like the all like over. There's a personal you know, yeah, yeah. thing on it. All over, yeah. I think yeah. it was a showpiece in the pocket. But all oh, the all yeah. over was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The show that is works, great. Yeah. I think I need to like rob a bank and like buy yeah. it. Or if I was to yeah. like want all the clothes from any show, it would be that one. Really? Yeah, I just 
I just love the whole gene with the big coat and like the white trainer yeah. and just the and just the coats and I think that um, says a lot for this collection to hear you say that you're excited to shoot it and you say you're yeah, excited to wear it. Yeah. Those are the sort of things that I imagine a designer that's the best compliment you could pay Completely. a designer. Yeah. yeah, because I came out and I was like, Oh my god, I need to do like a shoot with ASAP Rocky, like quadrophenia, yeah. you know, <laughs> on a scooter with a pinstripe suit and a parka. It's kind of, you know, at least it got my mind going. Like yeah. that um, mustard yellow with the jeans and the trainers like yeah. going back to yeah, the, but I love um, this the old one Dior as well, that jeans huge that coat with the jean it's just yeah, really nice yeah. it's so good but it felt very true to him as well because you know Chris it's, it's very simplistic but it's always about kind of updating well, yeah. tailoring remixing codes to. yeah exactly and it yeah. felt like it did that while it nodded to the codes of the house and it was just yeah really really confident I just want to know what happened because it's got a completely different feel to mm. anything else he's, he's done, done at Dior Homme so far but it's kind of that unsaid thing in fashion with Chris Van Ashen doesn't it where kind of everyone's kind of like you know, because there's Raph there now, and everyone goes, oh, wouldn't it be great yeah, for Raph? Yeah, I feel so yes. sorry for him I with all that. I feel sorry for him as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. he's just been in the shadow. Maybe he's yeah. just found his mojo, and... Yeah. This That's was his moment. Moment. This was his best collection so far that he's been with Yeah, Dior, definitely. And, and his own his own collection was great as well. You know, it wasn't... it's It doesn't move mountains, what he does, but his own collection was really nice, really focused, and it felt a bit more playful, a bit more fun as well. Some of that, you know, the kind of polka dotty tops that he did was really great. And these, like, wide pinstripes here with the pinstripe trousers. Really yeah. nice. Really yeah. nice. There was a lot of pinstripe in the shows, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah I thought one of the best suiting that I saw was at um, Givenchy. Yeah. I thought that was just incredible. Can we have a look at it? Do you want to see? That'd be great. And this was very much, again, going back to this idea that kind of the show, you know, it was in this big basketball. Do you want to yeah, watch but not even, not even <laughs> that. Beyond that. <laughs> and Jack. <laughs> but I, I thought beyond that, I mean, yes, it was a spectacle, the neon be basketball court and then the the um it's very loud the silhouette get, get, ignoring the show <laughs> looking at the clothes, at the clothes. <laughs> that geometric yeah. pattern on the pants which was like Thank a you. basketball court cool. yeah. but that really was incredible what he did with the pocket on the pants mm. yeah. and then he had this incredible shape and then the models were real beefcake real beefcake yeah. and and there was one <laughs> there was one look where the guy's got his hand in his pocket and it's it's emphasizing the fact that he's wearing pleated trousers and they were as far removed from a pair of docker pants as you can get yeah. <laughs> you know it looked like a really fresh look and yeah. he's wearing the, the the jacket and it was all about the stance as well mm. you know and i just think people can really relate to that and katie england i think styles the show she's so good i mean she yeah. when she was working with McQueen, she was designing it with him. You know, she was part yeah. of that that yeah. team. But here, she's she's kind of work. She brings out the best in the designer, so it's very healthy for her to go in um, a couple of times a see a couple of times a season from the outside and see a collection fresh and add her thing to it. But you can so see that he listens to his studio as well. Yeah. Mm. No disrespect to him, but no, yeah. he's really down. You know, yeah. I can so relate to that collection. It felt very London to me. Yeah. Even though he's talking about you know, sort of basketball references and stuff, it felt like a kind of Astrid Anderson kind of growing up almost. Yeah, it felt no, sexy at least. It's nice to see like men yeah. sexy. Like, yeah. I don't want to put on like a velvet blazer and tuxedo pant and a pointy shoe to go out. You know, it's don't like. You? Mm, okay. <laughs> but, um, I, found, I found it a really refreshing good. antidote to the Saint Laurent as well. I have to yeah. be yeah. honest. No, that's true. Mm. It's a different vision of masculinity, a different vision of men. Do we, a criticism that's kind of relatively frequently levied at what he does, especially in his menswear, is that it's kind of a little bit simplistic, you know, those kind of similar shapes, similar silhouette, print every season. Do we feel that this season? Do we feel that about him or is that unfair? Mm, I think he's really talented. I think oh. he's really good at doing what he does. I think he's made so much money considering, you know, I think they probably sell more menswear than they would women's wear. For it's Givenchy. so fresh. I mean, you go into the stores and mm. you walk in and it, the whole um, landscape of, of menswear retail has changed so much. Mm. You know, everyone wants um, Rick and yeah. they're calling him Rick. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> wants, you know, Givenchy. I mean, I must admit the thing about um, Ricardo Tisky is he's a victim of his own success because I'd love to wear a couple of pieces of his mm. clothing. But, you know, I don't want to see somebody in it. It's so popular. It feels so yeah, familiar. You know, so you can't have yeah. two diverse collections. And there's so many copycats as well. Do you not think that that's why it feels even well, more? Well, yeah. yeah. when that happens, that's a good thing. That shows yeah, exactly. that they're hitting, hitting the right thing. But I thought that was an amazing collection. And I love the way that the baseball caps were perfectly forward. Mm. Um, it was just... Was this one of your highlights clever. then? A real yeah. highlight for you, yeah. What was your take on it, Elizabeth? Uh, <laughs> I love that. Overcome. That's so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I thought this was one of his um, better collections. I really liked it. Mm. I thought it was nice. Um, it was nice to see that showmanship, as we were just discussing. Yeah. The set was um, really beautiful. I like the shapes. I like what he does. I would like to see something else. Yeah. Um, like, every time I go to one of his shows, all I can think of is that pink neon... Do you remember when he did that, like the well, pink all neon lace? Suit. Yeah. Yeah, it was just beautiful yeah. and it was just something that you hadn't really seen before and I just kind of I want that less rapper. You want to be surprised. Yeah. I want to be surprised by it. I feel like when I go to Givenchy shows, I always enjoy it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff, but um I'd like to be surprised. Yeah. Was there anything that did surprise us this season? Anything that kind of because I thought, like, I was really surprised by Yoji. Like, Yoji's always great, but I thought this can season just, was amazing. Can I just yeah. go back to the yeah, of course you can. <laughs> what I loved about this show as well was the running order. I just thought it was a spectacle in show editing. Yeah. You know, it really was such a strong edit. I don't know how many looks there were in that show, but it was really tight. Yeah. There was nothing there that didn't need, you know, everything there was relevant. Mm. It was funny as well because at Jackson's it was so loud and it was quite funny being there because you had to just watch it because it's so loud you couldn't talk to anyone you couldn't even say like I great think that's what it was meant well. to the be Martini though yeah. 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 yeah it what, was meant to be all consuming someone at the show? no but you know, <laughs> you know there's that normal thing of like that's not it or just even that kind of one comment and that was just gone it was like you had to <laughs> yeah. watch focus yeah, yeah I thought it was quite interesting it was consuming yeah, yeah. and I have to say Maria it looks Carla nice in a amazing. circle. Yeah, she did. She looked amazing. And maybe circles really work because this was a circle and Dries was, was a circle. circle. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it does. It does because you see it go past and then you, re you see it again. Yeah, and you see them like in the distance and you it? see it kind of in like in them all together. It was very yeah. geometric. That, the yeah. geometric message is what's on for me. Ball. I thought it really worked. It wasn't just the idea of a theme and a pattern, but that really worked on the pants. It really worked on the jackets. Mm. And I like love the, the it, it, top. For me, towel. it worked better than, yeah. than the globe in the Chanel show. Yeah. You know, this was part of the whole, it joined all the dots mm. of the collection. Oh, so a hit for Mandy. What was it? What were other people's? Like I, I was saying before, I, I really liked Yoji. I thought it was really brilliant this season. It was really new. It was really colourful, and um, that was kind of my surprise. It was always great, but this season was really. Felt a lot younger. The last few seasons, Yoji's felt quite old. Yeah. And I've always said that when I get like in my late thirties, I'll just end up just dressing in pure Yoji. Well, I love that late thirties <laughs> is old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost thirty now in a couple of weeks, so yeah, I'm thinking, already thinking about Yoji now, saving up for the for the funds. But it felt <laughs> a lot fresher this season. Yeah. No, it definitely did. There was a lot more kind of. You know, all of that colour, all of that print and some of the... The painting on the yeah, leather the was really amazing. Was right. I hated the hair. It. Yeah, the hair was distracting, I thought, with yeah. the kind of coloured bits. That was it. horrible, but yeah. the actual clothes were Don't really tell nice. Julian. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Yoji? Did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, yeah. like um, Elizabeth, I loved the painted leather. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like the way that things were really interesting from the back, of, from the front. Oh, completely. Like, you didn't, you, they were coming to you and, and the then there was like a well. zip and like the back that was open and something was falling through. And it was, you know, it would shoot amazingly as well. Yeah. You know, if you ever shoot Yoji, Yoji um, You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always looks beautiful. Yeah, it is really great. And I think one thing with um, with Yoji is it, it, he's so copied. You know, he's so referenced, especially right now. Mm. And and it's a shame for him in a way because while it's brilliant for him, obviously, but it, it can mean that he feels familiar. And this just felt so new. It felt so authentic, so Yoji. It was it was great to see. I thought. Any other highlights from people? I thought it was quite interesting that, um, you know, these attempts in Paris at this coloured hair or these cool little hair details. OK, we had the face veils at um, Givenchy and, and there were other, uh, Dries had the neon partings. Um, but it, for me, it just reinforced how amazing the grooming was at London, Fa at London yeah. Catcher's mm -hmm. Men. Fudge did so that amazing job, you know, yeah. like neon blue scalps. James Long, they were and brilliant, yeah. Katie Erie's incredible, it was like orange. Sid Vicious, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so it was just, it, it's really, it's unfair of me to say that no, because not. they're doing what is relevant, but actually, we did it so much better. Do you feel <laughs> that people are, are really looking at London now? Because obviously, I, I feel like you could see the influence of London on a lot of the the runways. Do you think people yeah. are, is making people sort of sit up and listen a little bit? I think last season was was the real turning point. Yeah. After so many years of, of promise that it's rare that I've always been excited about London menswear, but seeing other editors and other people saying actually London, not even just for menswear, 
it was it was one of the highlights. It was, it was actually the highlights of the whole season, including yeah. women's yeah. wear as well. And I think that's really mm. refreshing. And I think that has yeah, that might be a, an effect on on some other more established designers as well, mm. no, for pushing sure. them. And it wasn't just the kids. I mean, you know, um, Casey Hafer did their yeah. first show, yeah. and um, I loved his show. E yeah. Talks yeah, did interesting, you know, really interesting mm. things for someone who was more classically yeah. inclined. So, you know, I thought in London this time, it ticked so many boxes so many as, a, as an international yeah. show destination. And it's interesting because that youth thing that we were talking about, kind of when we were talking about Saint Laurent, but that seems to have really sort of that felt very much like it was a part of Paris, everyone was trying to do something kind of young and like the Lombard show felt like it was kind of a, a nod to all these different youth tribes. I don't yeah. know. Mm. Was that was Benjamin Bruno styling? Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. I thought that was, I don't, what did you guys think of Lombard? I was confused by Lombard? hearing like the references, he was saying it was, yeah. it was for every man, I wasn't, didn't have one man in particular, yeah. but for me it, it, felt, it felt like a, sing a singular vision. Yeah. Um, it did feel a bit Saint Laurent in, yeah. in, in some I ways. I like those arty pieces like with, the, with the hand and, and what have yeah. you. Yeah, it did, but, there was a lot of different but, stuff but, going but on. You know, but was, you know yeah. what, you, don't, you know, regardless of hearing what they're going to say backstage, it's almost like, well, what do you think when you see it? Mm. You know, are you into what they're putting out there? Mm. And I think Paris menswear was really lacking in that kind of young undertone coming through, like, um, What's the one that, uh, there's a few that aren't showing anymore that used to be very, very visible. I remember his name in a moment. But, you know, it's a bit like Louise Gray suddenly not showing yeah, at Women's Fashion Week. Those young ideas coming through, the, the new ones, who is that? Yeah. Well, we had Emmett Banan, who moved from Milan to Paris this season, which was a kind of a strange show. You know, he made a big comment on race and fashion. Yeah. What, what were your guys' thoughts on that? Well, I ended up interviewing him because um, I did like a, a oh race, God. a race think piece, race and menswear think piece. Oh. Um, because you know, obviously Jordan Copeland was walked for Burberry for the first time, so it was kind of in in in, in my mind. Um, and I did see some criticism. I think Alex Fury was was quite um, dismissive and saying it was just too that his tactics were very um, overhanded and. It was very obvious. I mean, he even came out with, at the end, yeah. whole, clutching a sign saying, "No to racism yeah. for the love of the love of the game, love of the sport." Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. Um, but I like the away from that. I actually like the collection. The collection was beautiful. The pieces were beautiful. Yeah. yeah, the music was great. Yeah, I love that denim look. I think the problem people had with it is, I think an editor in front of me, I can't remember who it was. They said something like, you know to see someone try and address race in something that's like a six month, you know, fashion show mm. where next season we move on. It's almost a shame, you know, it's, it's a systemic sure, issue. It? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, is it, is it, is it the yeah. arena to discuss such issues? I think Uma Ben has always been a designer that has kind of explored um, the subject of race. I and mean, his first collection was about the, his beard because growing up and working in the land, yeah. he was always kind of, um, because he's Turkish, we should say. This. Yeah, yeah, he's Turkish. He was he was abused for that in, in terms of the establishment. So he, it's a very personal subject to him. So I think yeah, he kind of I think he did make it even more personal, even yeah. though he based it on Jackie Robinson. Yeah, well, it's important player. that race is talked about. I think definitely like, anything that gives visibility to it. I think it's just it's always going to be controversial when you do it as such a part of your show. It yeah. feels almost like so next season you're not going to care. Well, yeah. Walter, Walter Van Berendonck made yeah. a big thing about yeah. race exactly. in his show as well. Can we go to Walter? Yeah. Yeah. With the Stephen Jones um, kind of... Headphones. Yeah. 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 Everyone was talking about that being a reference to the Chanel show, the Texas... What was Dallas it? One. Dallas. 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 Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, was um, that? I don't think it was, though. No, I thought no. it was just about Russia. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was it was interesting to see, and, and uh, there was a lot of comment on that in, in a less obvious way than mm. Banan. It's not a, a Paris collection, but in Milan, you know, Donatella made a big point that her collection was about kind of being able to be whoever you want, like yeah. dress free, love free. Yeah, kind yeah well, of that works because me and Steve have got our leather jock straps on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> going, we'll stand up in here in the little twelve. To, going back to your comment about Burberry, by the way, I know we're talking about Paris. Um, that's just all come out on Facebook lately and people have really responded to that I mean well I we, we, we interviewed Jordan we kind of like said the first black model to walk Burberry and if, even I even writing that was like really yeah but That's crazy. Yeah, I think I think the message for me what the, my feeling on it was how did they get away with that for so long yeah. but it's the same there are so many designers you think yeah Celine Raph yeah it's really bad and, and this is why it's, it's you don't want to kind of like dismiss Emmett for doing something like that because it's great to see it have a visibility it's mm. just a shame that it is great but where's the longevity in it exactly. it's a one you don't want to see one season it lasts all black for yeah, it's what like 20 it minutes it kind of takes the point away it's like I thought it was weird when Italian Vogue kind of did the blackish shoe 
Oh, she's again. having a lot of problems at the moment. That's backfiring on her again. Yeah. And with Diane Pernay, I believe. Mm. It's, it's so really, something's blown up. It's really bad, though, because you do... You, you're, we're all right in the thing is it becomes really easy not to notice. So it's great that, that people talk about it, but then you want to see it. It should just be included as normal. As you know, normal. if I saw a yeah. thing and it was like, oh, we're going to do, like, I don't know, a ginger magazine or a gay magazine, <laughs> you, you're immediately highlighting and making an issue though. of it. There are, but... Um, <laughs> But I know what you mean, yeah, it makes it, it others it. You don't need it? to do yeah. that. Well, the, the Vogue mm. Black issue was like, it was celebrated at the time by a lot. Of, I think um, the guy that does JC Report, James, Jason Campbell, wrote like an, oh, an yeah, interesting piece for, for Boff, saying at the time, and even he appeared in that issue, and he was like, it felt like a moment, but then yeah. after that, I think he's, they, the, no, he's the one gone. that's got issues at the moment actually with it now. Because now it's, it's, it's part of the site and it's a, se a separate oh, yeah, site where they like celebrate black fashion. It's like, yeah. why are you celebrating oh black fashion? Yeah. It's a yeah. separate entity. Um, it's hard. Do you think that, you know, you mentioned with Burberry and also with, um, we talked about kind of Celine and, and even Prada, you know, designers mm. that haven't been particularly... Well, Malika was the first black model to be used since... What? Naomi, Naomi Campbell. Naomi, yeah. Naomi in It was like, like 17 years. Yeah. In the campaign, yeah. but Jordan's was... But yeah, yeah she, was the first, yeah. she was the yeah. first yeah. in like 10 years or something yeah. Like yeah. recently. Do you think there should be kind of, I know there are sort of rating systems where lists will come up with designers that aren't seen as sort of being embracing racial diversity, but do you, why do you think it's so sort of easy to forget or it is so forgotten? Should designers be sort of, like, I don't think anyone would want to see kind of quotas or something that feels really simplistic, yeah. or, but what's the answer to it? Because it's a real problem, it's awful, it's horrible being at shows when you... When yeah, you and even in, like, say, New York, you think New York's a cosmopolitan city, you, you think it'd be quite representative, but I think Jezebel did a piece on Autumn Winter 13, so a couple of seasons ago, and it was like, black models were like 8% or like 10%, it was, mm -hmm. it was crazy low. And, he said, like, and then you go to Milan, obviously it's, it's much lower. We did an interview with Jordan Dunn, and she's like, she said she hadn't experienced any racism herself, but lots of her black model friends end up going to Milan and they just don't get picked at all. And she's um, never had a, her own cover in Vogue, has she either, which is worth no. bearing you in know, mind. You know yeah. what always gets me though, when the big fashion houses have Asian models, and it just gets me because they have to do that, yeah. because that so much of their business is in those markets, yeah. and I find that so patronising. I, mean, yeah. I, always, I always comment on the fact that there always seems to be like, they allow like four, maybe five, yeah. like, it's like a, there is like a quota, we go back to that, yeah. there is a quota of, of, of Asian models, and there's like they, they appear, for, appear for a couple of seasons and then, and then they go. Yeah. Which is really exciting about the 12 Slaves model. Yeah. I mean, she is killing she's it. She's in the Mimi campaign. Yeah. yeah. Lupita. Uh, yeah. On the cover of Dazed and Confused. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. what? She's, <laughs> she's yeah. incredible. Up a lot, that Dazed though, cover a, is yeah. so awesome. Yeah, yeah we should Which say that. There's, there's been a really powerful... Uh, oh, the actress. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's been a, a really yeah. powerful response to her and yeah. she is just looking beautiful. Yeah. She's absolutely stunning and on so On the red talented. carpet as a person and she's yeah. so... so She holds herself so well when she speaks to people. I mean. It's so exciting, you know, but she, you, you don't realise that how she's going to shake up all areas. Like we're talking about show, shows and quotas of ethnic minority yeah. models. But it happens all over in every yeah. business, in every realm in, in, the, in, the, in the world. You know, this is an issue. I think yeah. rather than quotas, you just have to celebrate the designers that are kind of pushing in a more unconventional beauty. And, and they are the likes of like Ricardo Tishi that's been doing it and Rick, since, since they died. And Rick Owens, yeah, they, they, are, the, they are the two that really do kind of set the imagination um, free in that respect. Mm. Um, I, do, yeah, I don't think it's going to work if you, if you set quotas on design. No. I just don't no. think they'll, they'll do but, that. But the, but the Burberry issue was a bit of a wake-up call for a lot of people because yeah. I'm not having a go at Burberry now at all. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the bigger picture, which is, you know, we hadn't realised. No, exactly, and in, yeah. a, in a way, are we guilty as the industry yeah. Yeah. from not, you know, not allowing that, but I'm just saying that, you know, I think that we need to have our eyes a bit more wide open in this issue. No, yeah. I think definitely. I did a little bit of research on the, when I was doing the think piece and looking at sort of the models.com ranking system and like only like two or three black models, both men's and, and women's appear in the top 50, which is... Which, which you can't blame yeah. models.com for. They're only going on... Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm using that as more of an independent kind of yeah. Yeah. assessor. But it's interesting to, to kind of 
in, in the men's world, one thing that really always strikes me when you see the men's because obviously we cover men's and women's here at Show Studio, so I do both, is you do just this concept of kind of diversity in an appearance is just so much stronger in the men's. You know, the, just the amount you see older models or models of different sizes or models with beards, you know, in the men's and just in the women's, that has just oh, not Oh, no, 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 on. everyone's over the beards at the moment. There's a big backlash against <laughs> beard the whole backlash. beard. Beard Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, this, this concept of kind of models of all different ages, you know, we saw that a lot, especially yeah. in Paris, you yeah. know, like, the beautiful guy that opened Baluti, who must be sort of in his like late forties yeah. and fifties, looked amazing. Oh, yeah. And just in the in the women's, you just you don't see that at all. There's no kind of concept of that. I don't think. I think in menswear, there's there's not that fear to to street casts. Like going back to Aggie and Sam's collection, they were looking for models that kind of confirmed their concept of um, East African kind of um, and developed and developing world. Um, Tensions. So they were looking at a very specific look, and most of the they said most of the agencies that they were approached just didn't have the black models that they wanted that, they, yeah. that fitted that kind of aesthetic. So they just went out and looked. They went to church. They went to clubs. They went everywhere yeah. trying to find this person. And they've street cast a lot before. I think that's yeah, what I'm saying. Exactly. With, yeah, exactly. With you know old guys with beards and everything. Yeah. You know, Richard Green and, and Patrick Grant holding a dog. And <laughs> yeah, I just think there's, there's a lot of there's kind of a sense of freedom within menswear yeah. to, to do that. I think menswear designers are generally inspired more by like an attitude of a man yeah, or the way that they act or the way they are or the way they speak. So it doesn't necessarily matter and I feel like maybe it comes down to like almost like with women's wear it's like less about a character or less about a person but it's just simply the body. Yeah. And in design aspect, maybe a laziness of the designer is things look better on someone that's very very slim very and tall. nothing yeah. very but they can't alienate plain. their audience at the end of the day no. it's really important now to to respect your audience and in a way you know by by going along with those models that you're feeling you're you can't play with the customer I mean that's no. the thing the customer's got the power you know a, a hair's breadth of a dec decision makes someone choose one brand to another at retail yeah. and, and that's what your business is based upon. Um, also there's some very interesting cast casting agencies coming through, yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. There was a really good one at, um, at London Collections Men, um, Supermodel or something, that did um, Katie Erie's show. Uh, yeah, they yeah. have some really great models. I mean, I re mm. you really notice yeah. good casting, I think. Mm. Mm. Um, and also, I was talking to Adwa Boa, the model recently. She started a casting agency with, with the stylist Madeleine Ostley. Mm. And she was saying that clients, you know, they're doing shoots for um, Love, American w. Vogue. They did one with W of us. Yeah, they've done W. Yeah. They're, 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 they're doing a lot of shoots. They're working with well. Tim Maybe. Walker. Yeah. They're working with Tim Walker, Jürgen Teller. And they're saying that, you know, I was asking Mad them about, about um, the sort of, you know, what are people looking for in casting? And they, they do want these kind of imperfections or interesting yeah. character traits, not imperfections for the sake of imperfections, but character traits, which is translated to real people. Yeah. yeah. And there's so much research that's done that suggests, you know, like Karen Franklin's so great at raising awareness for this, but kind of, like, especially women, I think it's probably the same for men. Like, if you, the consumer responds to a, a vision that they identify with that looks like them. And, and it's, that's why I find it so great in the men's that you see so much diversity. But, but it's bizarre. really good to challenge. I think I still believe in challenging the audience. It's very important that if you've got an audience and you know what they want, just push, you've got to keep no, pushing No, but I mean, I mean for, for a woman to see kind of a size eight woman in a dress, it's not going to make her want to buy it if she's bigger than that. You know, that you want But it, it does because it's always worked. But I, I don't know, has it always worked or does it just work because it's never been... Ch you know, the Dove campaign, think how successful well, it that hasn't, was. Yeah, it's successful because it appeals well, to the masses. So. Mm. Um, but when you're selling fashion and high fashion and you're moving into couture, it's a very different thing. It has to be aspirational. There has to be an aspirational level there. And do you think there's kind of involving body aspiration and that helps kind of... Um, maybe body, but just the way it looks, the way it fits, the way it makes somebody feel, the way the model moves down the catwalk, it's all conducive to this person actually buying it or wanting to buy it. I guess it has to feel removed from you in a way when it's luxury, because yeah. that's what makes you aspire. Yeah, like I don't want to see me walking down the catwalk. <laughs> I think one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest <laughs> issues though, um, going back to retail, my favourite subject, um, <laughs> is that the stores don't buy the sizes. And actually, I do this a lot on a lot of websites, just to find out how much they buy. You know, like um, if there's a great jacket by Junior, I'll just click. If you, I'll click that I'm buying three, just to see whether they've bought three in that yeah. size. 
and it's amazing how few pieces the stores buy so they're splitting their risk continually they're trying to cover all these fabulous collections but actually they don't really buy that much yeah. so it's really hard to buy into it if you're you know you've got to remember that a lot of the designer clothes let's say if they're small medium and large a large is a 12 yeah. Which I call a medium. Yeah, no, definitely. So a lot of them don't even buy large. So the biggest size they have is a medium. You know, a lot of the Japanese designers as well, if you go to um, stores that sell Genu or Comme de Garçon, you know, they've only got small or medium. Well, they do large. And actually, it's made for Japanese physique, yes. which is quite smaller limbs. So I find it really hard, you know, to buy into Comme des Garçons when I go to stores like Dover Street Market, they don't do the large and, you know, I've got big shoulders mm. um, and I just can't, you know, Johnny Watanabe, I can't even fit my arm into, into a, a medium. Yeah. So, so actually it's really hard to, to buy into those brands because they're trying to buy a lot, mm. but really are they, they're not, they're, t they're touching on them. Yeah, rather than sort of being authentic. That's interesting actually, it's kind of like nodding to it, but without actually following through. I'm, I'm conscious of time, but one collection we haven't talked about, which I guess is actually a nice one to kind of round things off because it's our, our resident star in Paris, which is Kim Jones at Louis Vuitton. Um, what do we all think of, of that collection? Can we go to Louis Vuitton, please, Liam? Um, for, was it a highlight for the, of the season, the, the Vuitton one? Because, you know, it's always a one that everyone... everyone it normally is for me, but I don't think this season it was the real highlight. I think there's sure. a reason why I think maybe it's coming now and not... Um, not earlier. Yeah, it, wasn't, but it wasn't right. It. I, I, I yeah, felt I very it was similar. very nice. Yeah, but it was. It wasn't that. It wasn't. But it was, it was super luxury. I mean, it was super yeah. seriously, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. intimidatingly. It was so. beautiful. Like this is one of the palette cleansers that I was kind yeah. of talking exactly. about yeah. earlier. Like it's it's beautiful stuff. Like you've got the kind of indigenous to what he's referring to mm. um, South America mm. you've got the Vicuna and it's just like I mean it's made to order you can't even buy that in the shop it's beautiful yeah, it was yeah. incredible. but I did find myself kind of as the models were walking past like looking at the back to see whether there's any insignia or some yeah. kind of embroidery you wanted something mm. a little bit there's always a little logo yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly you wanted yeah. something playful where's the Vuitton in Sorosky <laughs> 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 but that's true there, there wasn't the kind of subversive kind of there's a, always a little wink or a little bit of wit with him and that, that I just that but, but it's funny you go back to at Louis Vuitton menswear show and literally the the accessories are laid out it is insane yeah it is really insane and all those accessories are completely logoed up but yeah. it's at, at that whim uh, Alistair Mackey I think mm. starts yeah. this yeah. show yeah. and he's just picking out you know as the models get ready it's not precisely decided what's yeah. going on each look but those accessories backstage seriously I yeah. mean god you just want to grab all of them <laughs> those it. glasses were kind of great I yeah, love the like amber like technical sports yeah. things that they had on their those faces. kind of techie glasses were a few were kind of floating around at a few places yeah, yeah. I liked them they were fun and the um, metallic we got the metallic bag that was kind of amazing Music was good. Was it George Michael? That one. Oh yeah. 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 No, there were bits to this. I think it's interesting. It felt. Yeah, I think palette cleanse is such a, a, a good, a good phrase this this season in Paris because it felt like there were the stars. You know that that Raph Simmons that we talked about before, um, and a few that kind of like Dries really kind of made everyone sit up. But it felt like this was a, a steady season, which is perhaps no yeah. bad thing. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 It was grown up right? and yeah, grown up. Chic and mm. Alison Mackie's amazing. So it's. You know, it's really classy. It was mm. chic. It was beautiful. Yeah. It wasn't what I expected, but that doesn't mean that I didn't like it. You didn't it. like it. But that's yeah. kind of good, maybe, because it was unexpected. It was it my made surprise. me curious yeah. to see what happens next. <laughs> you know what, yeah. though? He's had a few street pieces in. Like, last season, he had those kind of um, uh, Boy Scout jackets with all the patches that we all hankered after. And I think, you know, if we're really honest, we want a little bit of that. that exactly. we can We can really, mm. like... Yeah, you want um, that to connect with, and th and this show is just super luxury. Which I guess is again, it's beat on. Yeah, it's like Hermes almost in that way that yeah. I don't know if it would really warrant like a show. Like I went to both Reese's and it was kind of amazing, and so expensive. You know, when you're paying like forty thousand for a coat, it's kind of like, but yeah, it's just really luxurious, amazingly tailored men's Yeah, Will work. Smith. Was that the show? No, oh, yes. yeah, Wilson <laughs> was there. everywhere. He would take away from Paris menswear, wasn't he? Yeah, Valentino it's was my somewhere. twin. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I was just super excited by it because he kind of created this kind of like really interesting vine yeah. as, as like an inv invitation. Not sure whether you saw it, but no, kind of like shooting up to space and then it kind of like flew back down. It was kind of like what's that David Attenborough show uh, like Under the Sea type thing, but that on like 
an acid. It was it was yeah. crazy. Blue Planet. Blue Planet. It was kind of, it was kind of <laughs> Blue Planet. Up, in, up into the <laughs> sky yeah, and shooting down. It was just like kind of a orgy of, of blue and yeah. like exploration. And I kind of expected that. And it, it seemed to be well, a bit so more. So you redid the check in the blue, which was yeah, kind of that, that was that was the heavy thing. And, was, and yeah. actually, that gave me a check in the blue. It was beautiful. Was on sale in the store immediately. Yeah, yeah. some of the accessories were available straight away. And it's really yeah. that I like. I want a bit of that Damier check, and but that I, I do actually. That's the aspirational piece. I really want that. Yeah. So um, if we had to sum up Paris the season as a whole, what is it that, that Elizabeth has said, that phrase that's kind of stuck with us all? Was it a palate cleanser, a bit of a kind of just everyone treading water, doing something nice and moving on? Or was it, are we being too harsh on it? I think a little bit too harsh. When you've got, when you've got Dries doing new things and you've got Raff and, and Sterling doing new things, I think that's a little bit harsh, but I can see, I can, that is... I didn't say all of them. No, yeah. <laughs> But were we moved by Paris in the way that I we were? I, I, was was. Bit, I was a bit disappointed, actually. I, I was. I mean, there's those obvious highlights. Um, I just thought it was a bit dependable. Mm. I think after I'm compar- not comparing it, not, it's not fair to compare it to London because I'm always super, super excited by London, but comparing it to Milan, which is always a bit flat. And Milan was, was actually quite nice this They're season. Trying, yeah. It was very, it was safe, safety nice, but there was nothing, I couldn't, I couldn't really remember. It can't even, for me, it's even a disappointing Prada collection, whereas I think all the big guys no, I love Prada. stepped yeah, up I love this Prada. season <laughs> because the, men, the women's wear was the, was the was the was the real star. We were no, screaming. We in the were in the pit. The pit. We were screaming. We were so excited. It was so exciting. It was the best thing that <laughs> ever happened. It was God. absolutely incredible. I think <laughs> women's wear Prada and Mew Mew last season was was amazing. Oh yeah. I just think sure. this. Yeah. But, I don't know. It was it was it was it was, it was, it was nice. Yeah. Hashtag nice for, for Milan <laughs> and uh, palette cleanser for, but with a little bit of some teasing elements for, for Paris. That's, that's my summary. I think that's a good way to round things up. Very <laughs> said with great authority. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. That was a wonderful Paris roundup.